Hello everybody. So I was talking to my friend Mike on the phone today and he was explaining to me that his fan clutch is acting kind of wonky here. And um, through some uh, back and forth discussion, we, we believe it's most likely the fan solenoid because uh, he's already been through some other things on this truck and we'll kind of explain that to you as we go. Uh, but this is a 2010. 2010 Kenworth T660, right? With a Cummins ISX. So I thought it would be nice for you guys to see some things on some on some different trucks instead of just my same old Freightliner all the time. Um, just got here. We're at a, doing this at a truck stop, so pardon me if it's kind of noisy. I'll just pan around and, and prove to you here. There's a, a fuel island and uh, we're parked in a peculiar spot here, so we may get some noise and I apologize for that in advance. But uh, let me introduce you to Mike here and you can hear his voice. Hi, this is Mike. Uh, <laughs> so Mike, why don't you tell us kind of what the symptoms are here, what's been going on? Well, the symptoms with it is if you take a look at my fan there, um, as you're going down the highway, it will come on on its own. Now, yes, this does have an automatic system and whatnot too, but I'm getting no indicator and it just finally is staying on all the time and I've got an inrush of air to it all the time right now. So, and some things that we already kind of went through verbally here is uh, the high pressure switch for the AC. Uh, he's just uh, just been through all that, so we ruled that out. Um, an ECM issue can also cause this. We're hoping that that's not the issue, but we kind of got to the to the fan clutch solenoid, and we're discussing it and discovered that it's never been replaced in this truck as what 1.1 million miles roughly. Yep, 1.075 million miles. So, so regardless of whether or not it's bad. We're gonna start there because that sucker is way past its life expectancy anyways. So why don't you grab the new part? He swung into Kenworth and got a new part and I met him here. So this is what our fan clutch solenoid looks like on this Cummins. You have an inlet and outlet. This is where it mounts to. And then you got your electrical wires that go in here. And that's just a vent for uh, exhausting air. So. Every truck's going to be a little bit different, as well as we discovered, every truck is going to be mounted in a different place. Most of your trucks are going to be, you know, this is where the steering column comes out of the firewall. Most of your trucks are going to be up in here somewhere, or down in here. But no, not this truck. This truck is tucked way up in there. I don't know if you can see the receiver dryer. Behind that, you got a green airline. It's tucked back there in that mess. So we got quite a challenge here. Um, and a hot motor to work around. We let this thing cool off a little bit, but it's pretty warm outside today and the motor's pretty warm. So we're gonna do the best we can. And like I said, we're in a truck stop. So do we have all the tools in the world? No, we don't. But I'll show you what we do have or what, we, what we're gonna need here. Um, we got a half inch drive ratchet here. Uh, we discovered we're gonna need a half inch extension. Uh, that's an impact one, obviously, but that's what I have. 13 millimeter is going to be the size of that nut that this mounts on. Of course, we got our new solenoid. As long as we got it apart, we're going to go ahead and check the 12 volt reference um, at the plug. Wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure we're not, you know, losing any kind of electrical uh, supply there. Yeah, as long as we have it apart, we might as well. And then, uh, he went and picked up some extra airline, which was pretty smart, just in case we need to replace any of that airline. And uh, then for cleaning up, we got this these Gojo waterless scrubbing towels here. Not a sponsor, but uh, they work pretty good for cleaning up. And uh, forgot to mention too, a lot of your air fittings when you buy them, like on my Freightliner, you'll have to spin the fittings off. They're they're metal. You have to spin the fittings off, put them on the new solenoid because uh, most of them come without fittings. But this one, they're just they're just push connect here and here. So that should be pretty slick. So we're gonna get everything situated here. Did I miss anything, Mike? No, nope, that should do it. Oh, okay. you'll need a wrench to, re uh, to release these tabs yeah. on the old fitting. Wrench or a screwdriver will work too, right? Yeah, wrench or a screwdriver. Whatever you got, you should have both in your truck, some kind of wrench. And definitely some screwdrivers so why don't we show just as long as we're down here on the ground and everything's easier why don't we show how you uh, put the airlines in and release them there so this is you just push the airline in pull it out to lock it 
then to unlock it, push it in and hold it and it'll pop right out. Yep, see how easy that was? It'll never be that easy when you're up there in a tight spot on the truck. It'll but when you have one that's old, it may not come, uh, may not release because of all the dirt and grime that's in the system. That's right. They, you may find that it doesn't want to release, and in which case, that's where that extra airline is going to come in handy because you could always cut it and splice a new piece in. But we don't want to do that if we don't have to. So we're going to get everything situated here. I guess I'm going to run the camera and narrate, and Mike's going to get dirty. And uh, oh, before you start this, be a good idea to bleed all the air off your system. So. You know, pump your brakes down, whatever you gotta do, because otherwise when you pull them air lines off, you're gonna get one heck of a rush of air, and uh, it's gonna suck. So, here you can hear them pumping the brakes down. And, uh, okay, well, we're gonna get situated and we'll be back. All right, we're back. Mike's climbing around up there like a monkey. Just to show you, we took this little shroud here off the air cleaner because it's kind of in the way so uh gave himself a little bit more room first thing you got to try to release those airlines and they've been on there for about 1.1 million miles so it likely won't be easy but uh do the best you can a way you can test your fan clutch see if that's working as Mike is up here killing himself in the hot engine and I'm standing down here in the shade is uh, put the truck off turn your key on to supply power to the solenoid and pull the airline off and then listen and you should hear your clutch engage or disengage down here um, then you'll know that your fan clutch is working properly uh, they do go out they can stick you know so but <clears throat> this solenoid here was eighty dollars so it's worth replacing at that at that mileage this thing's gonna be the dickens to be attached to the truck so it stays on there but like on my truck the bolt is not attached so when I replace mine I just threw a new bolt on too but this one isn't gonna be so so easy or so cooperative plug out and uh, these airlines are gonna be a real bugger here for us so how's your plug look no corrosion in it no corrosion that's good and uh, you know you can always if you're worried about that just put a touch of dielectric grease in there but that's a weather packed plug so they keep the, the moisture out and the grime out pretty doggone good so I'll try and get closer you can see releasing the airline two-hand job so when you're reaching in a tight spot it's hard to get both arms in there it's 
See how he's pressing down with a little wrench like that on that little collar? It's kind of a little trick to get them things to release easier. You got one off. This one might end up having to be cut. Yep, and that top one there is probably going to have to be cut. It's being a real bugger. And we got, we got the extra airline to do it if we need to. That line is a little bit longer than it even has to be. So right at this point here, I'm going to pause it. We're going to get that son of a gun off. Then I'll come back and we'll, we'll test the, uh, the voltage. All right, we got that old one off. You probably heard some air rushing out there. He just put the new one on, put the, the supply line in, air supply from the truck. Now this other air line is going to be the air line that goes to the fan clutch. <laughs> did end up having to cut that supply line just a little bit but uh, Mike said something while I had the camera off there that's a good point when you're cutting airline don't use the side cutters because it cuts it crooked you just use the jackknife pocket knife so got both airlines on I'm gonna wiggle her back into place I'm gonna grab the multimeter here <laughs> okay so we're putting uh, the new solenoid on here and uh, run that nut down it remember that solenoid is just plastic it does have a metal sleeve through it but don't don't reef on that because it like I said only plastic uh, we got a bunch of dust on there on that plug Mike let's blow that off before we put the electrical plug in okay <clears throat> I know you can't see it from your position Actually, I can probably get that from this side, probably be easier if you want. There you go. Push it in, give her a little tug. Okay, you already tugged on the top one. It looks yep. like it's compressed pretty good. Yep. Okay, so we got the multimeter here. Let's just test this plug. Oh, we gotta turn the power on. Oh yeah, truck. we don't have the ignition on. Here, just gonna, you hold that. And on the floor is a wire uh, bundle of wire ties. Okay. I'm big on tying stuff up on here because a lot of times your wire chafing, hose chafing, AC line chafing is just because stuff rubs back and forth. Uh, matter of fact, FMCSA here uh, in a couple weeks in September is going to be watching and eyeing brakes and brake lines for chafing um, I've seen a brand spank a new trailer out of the manufacturer with uh, airlines actually rubbing against each other Adam's just about back up here alrighty I got the camera here I was just explaining to our guests uh, why I'm big into wire ties. All right, we're back. I think we're ready to test the voltage here. Let's cut that off. I'll uh, give you that and I'll focus on the, the meter here. So all he's doing is sticking a probe into the plug there. You need to have your ignition key on, power supplied for this. So right here we got a consistent voltage, 12.38. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's perfect. So, plug her back in. And if you're wondering, there is a little bit of lubricant that I put on that plug uh, just to help it slide so it don't roll. I had sprayed everything down with some uh, uh, lubricant, uh, spray lubricant, um, like JB80, WD40, anything of that factor. Just something to keep it so it doesn't roll on you. OK, 
okay? We're gonna clean up our tools here off the engine and uh, we'll test this baby out. Start her up and we'll be back for the, for the test here. Okay, we fired up the motor here. Gotta build up air pressure. And then uh, once the air pressure is built up, this truck has a manual switch where we can start and stop the fan. We'll go see if we can roust it a little bit. We have to be very, very quiet. Oh, we've awoken the beast. She looks a little sleepy. What do you think, Scooter? Oh, good morning. At four o'clock in the afternoon. All right, let's go see if we get some air pressure built up here. We'll get back to work. Since the, since the sound quality was bad on this video, probably from being in the truck stop, stay tuned till the end here, because uh, I have, uh, we'll play a little bit of highway trivia from, uh, from a video I took going down the road the other day. Let's check our air pressure, Mike. It's all good. What do we got for pressure? All right, we're back here. It got really loud, so I cut the tape, but we built up air and tested out the switch. It does engage and disengage the fan now. We found two other problems that the green supply line up there was leaking, so I just had to push it in a little tighter and, and uh, it, it went away, but we got an air leak down here. And if you can hear that, but that is inside the fan hub. Here's where that supply line goes into your fan hub right there. And uh, the sound, you can hear the air whooshing against the metal. So we're gonna have to, uh, that's not something we're gonna do in a truck stop parking lot. But uh, we got half the battle solved. The fan will engage and disengage now. So I guess we'll have to address that here another time. But like I said, the side of the road or a, or a truck stop parking lot is not the place to do that. So, and you can hear it partially went away when we shut the key off because it cut the air supply to it. So it's just there, it, it quit now. That solenoid either closed or opened. I don't know what the default position is for this one, but it went away. So that's how you change a fan solenoid. And uh, like I said, stay tuned till the end and I'll put a little piece of uh, highway trivia on here for you. Have a great day. So we've got something on fire here on the interstate. Let's see if we can see what it is as we come up to it. Oh boy, that's a doozy of a fire. Sorry about the shaky camera, but I just saw this. Grab the camera quick. Let's see if we can see what kind of car that used to be. Well, I can't even tell. Maybe a Ford Explorer? But, oh well, we see a lot of that here on the road. Thought I'd share that with you.